I want to get straight into these uh, presentations. You're all going to do lovely. So the first is Madeline Edmonds, whose title, thesis title is Sound and Yoga, Breath and the Body as an Instrument. Welcome, Madeline. Sound and Yoga, Breath and the Body as an Instrument. So why the topic of Sound and Yoga, and why is this important to me? Well, I am a certified sound bath practitioner, as well as a yoga teacher and an interdisciplinary artist and musician, and I'm currently earning my credentials in yoga therapy, in clinical yoga therapy from the LMU's Yoga Therapy Rx program here, and I'll be graduating from that next month. And before I started in the Master of Arts in Yoga Studies program, I studied music and vocal performance, and I graduated with a degree in music composition and songwriting from the um, Los Angeles College of Music in Pasadena. And so it's my passion to integrate sound and vibration and with therapeutic yogic techniques in an aim to create a space for individuals to achieve deep relaxation, reduce stress, and also allow for the restoration of mind, body, and spirit. So my main research question was, how can the body be used as an instrument for self-produced sound and yoga? And then I also sought answers to the following sub-questions. Uh, how have breath and sound been theorized in Indic thought? How does the body work anatomically and physiologically as an instrument for both breath and sound? How have breath and sound been utilized in yoga therapeutics? And then how can I uh, develop these Indic practices and theories of breath and sound and then carry them forward into a modern manifestation? So I proceeded to answer these research questions through conducting a literature review, and some of the main sources that I used are listed here. And I also reviewed some existing studies that have been conducted regarding sound and its therapeutic effects. And then I conducted my own biofeedback study, which I'm going to be discussing in more detail shortly. So for the purpose of this thesis, um, yoga is considered a union of breath and sound. The word yoga comes from the Sanskrit verbal root yuj, meaning commonly defined as union. So breath is life, breath is sound, and breath is also yoga. And we're born in a, a, exhaling, in this cry of vocalization. And under normal circumstances, we're able to breathe without telling our body to breathe. It does it for us automatically. And this is due to the autonomic nervous system, which is our brain's unconscious control center for the vital functions of the body. So the autonomic nervous system activates the breathing in and breathing out uh, functions of the body. And then because of this, everyone seemingly knows how to breathe. Uh, but many people aren't conscious of their breath. So connecting to the breath and to the body is essential for the creation of sound and for the practice of yoga, and also for creating a balanced state for the body, mind, and spirit. And we're unable to actually control the other vital functions of the autonomic system, so blood pressure, digestion, heart rate, simply by thinking about it. However, we are able to change our respiratory rate with our thoughts. And so that this means that we can actually change our breath with, by using our mind. Um, so sound is produced in the body, and it is supported by the mind and the breath. So Judith E. Carmen said, yoga in its purest form is like singing, and singing in its purest form is like yoga. The human voice is the oldest musical instrument, and it exists within us as a product of physiological functions and anatomic structures. So speaking, chanting, and singing are all natural ex ex uh, expressions of exhalation. And the vocal organ consists of the lungs, larynx, pharynx, nose, and mouth, and that's what's used to actually create sound within the body. All right, so when we exhale, air is forced from the lungs and into the vocal tract, and then this pressure of the upward airflow causes the vocal folds to create rapid vibrations, which then is translated into sound. Um, and the number of times that the vocal folds actually vibrate per second is actually what creates the perceived pitches of the tones, and then the coordination of the larynx muscles is what changes the length and the thickness and the tautness of the vocal folds, which then creates those various pitches or notes. So therefore, when we think of the body as an instrument, the vocal folds can actually be thought of similar to a vibrating string, and then the rest of the vocal tract is similar to the, to the body of the musical instrument where the sound resonates. So sound is primal, it's ancient, and it's foundational. 
And the concept of sound is deeply embedded within the historical, philosophical, and theological aspects of the history of yoga. In India, sound is believed to have a spiritually transformative power in both the inner spiritual sounds of meditation and the physical outer sounds of mantra and chanting. In fact, James Mallinson and Mark Singleton actually say that the mere act of breathing is said to be an involuntary chanting of the famous Vedic Gayatri mantra. So the term Nada Brahman includes both the concept of Shabda, which is considered the linguistic word, and non-linguistic sound, such as music. And it was first mentioned within the field of musical discourse by the um, 13th century musicologist uh, Shangadeva in the Sangita Ratnankara text, who declared that Nada Brahman was the foundation of music. And this Hindu concept of Nada Brahman is a paradigm in which the whole world is based on sound, and it states that there are actually two types of Nada, or sound, the struck, the ahata, and the unstruck, the anahata. And Shankadeva was primarily interested in the ahata form of the sound, the struck sound, and felt that vocal music specifically was actually the most important due to its ability to connect the music directly to the process of the voice production within the body because it rises from the navel center. So Swami Kubalayananda is revered for his groundbreaking laboratory research into the science of yoga practices at Kavailadam in Lanavala, India. And through his studies, uh, he set a precedent, a precedent for the uh, therapeutic tradition of breath and sound research. And in yoga therapy today, we actually common use, commonly use chanting to strengthen the core. Um, and also to induce the rest and digest parasympathetic nervous uh, system response in the body. So BKS Ayengar said that yoga is like music. The rhythm of the body, the melody of the mind, and the harmony of the soul create the symphony of life. And it was actually the interactions between India and the West that set in motion a transnational musical dialogue, and there's much research that shows the efficacy of music and sound for therapeutic purposes both here in the West and in India. However, there are a few key differences. So in India, music is focused more on improvisation, on the voice, and on the concept of the Nada Brahman. And in the West, music is more focused on composition, on instruments, and the Pythagorean concept of the music of the spheres. So there's two significant studies uh, that I'd like to just highlight here. The first is a study conducted in 2013 in Sweden, and it was entitled, Music Structure Determines Heart Rate Variability of Singers and it aimed to discover how choir singing promoted well-being. So it demonstrated that song structure, respiration, and heart rate are all actually interconnected, and when choirs sing together in unison, the hearts of the singers actually accelerate and decelerate simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, in December 2018, I traveled to Pondicherry, India, and I visited um, CITER, the Center for Yoga Therapy Education and Research. And while there, I attended a presentation by Dr. Vasundara, who conducted a study called The Immediate Effect on Pranava Pranayama on Fetal and Maternal Cardiovascular Parameters. And she actually concluded that the, there was better autonomic regulation of the heart when performing and listening to OM. So therefore, yoga and sound actually have a therapeutic and palliative effect during the prenatal period. And then I conducted my own biofeedback comparison study in order to investigate the effects of blood pressure and pulse rate between silent shavasana and a sound bath experience that I've created, which I'm calling a vocal soundscape. And I did this by measuring blood pressure and pulse rate while the participants were laying down immediately before and immediately after the study. So there were four participants, participants total in my study, 50% were male and 50 were female. And then out of those four people, uh, only two of them had prior experience with a regular yoga practice and then attendance at greater than or equal to two instrumental sound baths. So Shavasana, it's also known as corpse pose, and it's an asana used in yoga to facilitate a smooth transition for the breath, for the flow of the breath. And while it looks like the easiest of all yoga poses, it's actually very complex uh, because the art of relaxation is actually very much more challenging than it seems. And then many iterations of sound baths have become increasingly popular over the years, uh, particularly here in LA. And most sound baths utilize instruments such as gongs and singing bowls. And I found in my research that most iterations of vocal sound baths uh, tend to use instruments or electronic sounds in, or in order to create like a foundational point 
for which then the vocals are added on top of. And I really wanted to create a vocal sound bath experience where I use my voice and my body as an instrument to create the entire soundscape. Um, and in order to do so, I've been inspired by both Western and Indic music thought and theory. And the vibrations from my vocal soundscape are intended to gently penetrate the listener's body, awakening within them their own inner vibration, and then uniting them with their breath and their consciousness. So the overall results of the comparison study showed that in silent shavasana, one of the four participants' biofeedback data increased. However, in all four of the participants in the vocal sound bath, all of their, uh, all of their blood pressure and pulse, rate, pulse rates decreased, which was very exciting. And then just, I also measured my blood pressure and pulse rates as the facilitator of the study. Um, and I actually found that they did both drop in both situations as well, even though I wasn't actually lying in shavasana or um, lying while I was listening to the sound. And I thought this was important to highlight because I felt that the same physiological relaxation effect was actually achieved by creating the sound as it was by listening and perceiving the sound. So by integrating sound and vibration through vocalization with therapeutic yoga techniques um, of breath control, the body can be used as an instrument to create a form of yoga for all and produce a space for individuals to achieve a deep state of relaxation, reduce stress, and allow for the restoration of the mind, body, and spirit. So I am going to be concluding with about a five-minute vocal sound bath experience. Okay, perfect. Um, and then at the end of the five minutes, I'm going to conclude with about 30 minutes of silence just to let the sounds integrate into your body. So I'll guide you back out in the end. Um, so you can find a comfortable seat. Uh, if you prefer, you can lie in Shavasana. That's an option and open to you. Um, and you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Did I say 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely meant 30 seconds. You guys look so so just settle in here. Um, you can close your eyes if you feel comfortable and find a comfortable position.
sound? The ooh sound? Um, every single uh, vocal sound bath that I do is actually improvised. It's under the style of the Indian tradition. So um, any of the uh, vowels have their different perspective uh, resonance in the body, and I just decided to choose ooh today, but I have used other ones. That's a good question. Thank you. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. allowing me to be here to honor you in this way. And that was just spectacular. And to see you bring all of the aspects of the essence of you into this and how it's flowering is just it's Thank you. namaste. Thank you for being here. I mean, I, I have only done a few so far because I created this uh, global soundscape experience for the purpose of this thesis, but it's something I'd really like to continue doing after, especially after the biofeedback study that I conducted and it had such significant results. Um, I'd like to do a wider study because I did feel that um, the one participant whose uh, blood pressure and pulse rate increased uh, during Silent Shavasana said that they had a hard time quieting their mind and that the sound was what what really allowed their mind to relax because they were able to focus on that sound. So um, so I'd like to be able to sort of harness that power and sort of experiment some more, but that was a really uh, magical experience for me to be able to prove that the sound actually deepens that experience of the yoga posture. Yeah. Did you loop your voice? I did, You yes. kept on changing, but we were hearing what you were mm -hmm. singing. Awesome. Yeah, so the way that I think of it is, um, I kind of think of it as like a vocal sculpture, so I'm building the loops um, vertically, but I'm also building them horizontally in time. <coughs> yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. Is your approach in any way based on the yogic subtle body chakras, koshas? Yeah, so I wrote a little bit about that in my thesis, because um, I know that Swami Kugalayanda did a lot with the prana moving through the nadis, um, but absolutely that's one of my main interests is um, how sound can be used to to release all that stuckness and, and open up the uh, nadis in the same way that prana, breath flow does, and because singing is an actual form of exhalation, it can do that, and what I'm thinking with this sound bath is it's almost like a sympathetic resonance, so when I'm creating the sound, it's activating those same vibrations within the other person's body and creating this this uh, reaction in the listener's body as well as um, the facilitator. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, there's another question. Yes. Well, I'm sure it's been suggested or thought about sharing an experience like this with the local police departments to calm down. It's <laughs> a good suggestion. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Seems like it could. Yeah. <laughs> Very relaxing. Well, I think at the end of the day, it's like for. What my main conclusion is that sound is a form of yoga for all people. It's a very accessible form. They don't have to, you know, do a particular posture. It can create this energy shift within them, um, and so it's something that I feel is open to everyone. Everyone is. We are all sound. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> do you have a question? No, I've, it's been answered. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you.